Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial. And in this video, I will be showing you how you can recreate this 3D glossy logo. And let's dive right in. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'll be creating a new document. So for this video, I will be using this custom size document, which is 1000 by 1000 pixels. And I'll be renaming this to 3D Glossy Logo. So you are free to use any size document you want because Adobe Illustrator actually provides these various, these various preloaded document sizes. But just in case, if you want to use the same document size that I'm, that I'll be using for this video, just type in 1000 by 1000 in the width and the height options and change your dimensions to pixels and let's create. Okay. So the first thing, first things first, I want to make sure that my smart guides options has been switched on because this smart guides will be helping us a lot to make our logo so to in order to check that we'll be going to view and just making sure that the smart guides options has been switched on so what i'm going to do first is that i'll be creating a background color so when you open your document by default this in the layers panel over here this layers this first layer gets opened up right so I'll be double clicking on this and I'll change the name from layer 1 to background and I'll be using this rectangle shape. I do not require the fill as of now. Sorry, I do not require the stroke as of now. So I'll be just clicking on this none option. So you can see that, that the stroke will not be applied and over here in the fill I'll be using the color black okay so i'll just click on my document once and this box comes up so over here we need to type in the values in the width and the height option so our document size was thousand by thousand pixels the dimension the dimensions is already there which is pixels all we have to do is just add in the values which is thousand by thousand pixels enter and with the help of the selection tool, I'll just drag the box we've just made and just fit it to our document like that. So once that's done, I'll go ahead and also lock my layer. It's like the reason why I'm locking my layer is that when I is that when I'll be recreating something like this, I do not accidentally move my document. Sorry move my background color or I do not make something on it or move it around and I do not want that to happen. I want the background color to be there intact the way it is. Okay. So once that's done, we can go ahead and also create a new layer from this icon. icon. I double click on layer 2 and rename layer 2 to be logo. So this is the second layer. This is the layer where we will be working on. All right. So what I'm going to do now is that coming back here to the panel, I'll be using this polygon tool for now. And I'll be using the fill to be white. Actually, I just require the stroke. So you just click on this. I'll be adding the fill later. So over here, with the help of the smart guides, I know that this is the center of my document. So I click on shift plus alt and just drag my mouse like this. So if you do not let go of your mouse and I want to make a triangle out of this polygon, right? So all you have to do is that just click on your uh, down, arrow key, down arrow key on your keyboard until you get a triangle like this okay so once that's made i'll select this and over here in this pen tool i'll i'll be using this anchor point tool and with the help of this tool i'll be just making some minor some changes in my shape so i'll select this path 
and just drag it out like this similarly with the other side as well and with this line over here I'll just bring it up like that and probably just make this a little bit more come out like that okay so once that's done we can go ahead and also round some of the edges that are there so I'll be rounding off this uh, this anchor point and I'll be rounding off the this anchor point as well so in order to do that we'll be I'll be using this direct selection tool I'll select this first anchor point and then just bring this circle down a little and you can see that the edge is now slowly becoming rounded like that. Similarly, click on this anchor point and with the help of this circle, just round this one as well. Okay, so once that's done, I'll select this and I'll swap this again so that the fill becomes white. So what I'm going to do is that I'll be making this shape in a little 3D format. Right? I'll select this. Go to this effect panel right here. Go to 3D and click on extrude and bevel. Okay. So over here in these options right here where there are some degrees that have been written. I'll be changing the degree slightly. So over here in this first one where it says minus 18 degrees, I'll be making this to 22 degrees. The second one where it says minus 26 degrees, I'll be making this to minus 10 degrees. And where it says 8 degrees in the third one, I'll be making it 9 degrees. And final one which is extrude depth, it says 50 points. I'll bring it down to 45 points and if we click on preview you can see that our shape now gets extruded like this and we click on ok all right so once that's made i'll select this and i'll just rotate this a little probably like that so that's that and while my shape is still selected, I'll go over, go over here to this object and click on expand, expand appearance. So like the reason why I've done this is because initially when our shape wasn't expanded, it we couldn't really make any changes to it. Like if you wanted to add any color, we couldn't do that because it was in a grouped format and it wasn't in a vector image at all, right? So this is made, so now we can just go ahead and add colors to this. So I'll select, as you can see that this is also grouped as well, because if I want to make just, if I just want to change the color of this white portion, this lower 3D option also gets chosen, right? So I'll right click on this, click on ungroup, and I'll right click again and click on ungroup again, twice. Now we can go ahead and add the color to our shape. So over here in this itself, I'll be adding somewhat a gradient shade to it, which looks like gradient shade, which looks a little, gives a little glossy effect. Right. But before I do that, I'll be making an offset path. So I'll just select this top portion, go to object, path and offset path. And over here, I'll be giving the value of minus 5. And if I click on preview, you can see like a small, a smaller version is created like that. So if you want, you can make it much more smaller accordingly. Or you can just stick to minus 5. But let me see how it looks with minus 10. Yeah, I'm liking minus 10 a lot better. And okay. So what we're going to do is that I'll be selecting this, wait, ungroup again, yeah, so this inner portion is selected, right, so I'll be adding a gradient in this inner portion, so I'll select this gradient tool, click on the linear one, and over here, let's add different colors, so I'll be choosing in the white one, I'll be adding light blue, in the 
black one, I'll be adding dark blue. And whoops. Okay. Apparently something happened. Wait, light blue. Oops, wait. Middle. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll be just changing the angle. Oops. Excuse me. You can just go ahead and also change the angle to this like that. Okay. I'll be selecting this outer one and adding a slightly dark, uh, adding another shade of blue like that. And over here in the 3D part, I'll be adding a much darker shade of blue so that you can make out that it's 3D like that. Now we can just go ahead and select this and I'll select that and I'll add the stroke to be white like that. Now you can see it looks a lot better and it's somewhat giving a glossy effect. So what I'm going to do is I'll select all of them and again rotate it a little like this. So I do not need the fill now. I let the stroke be white and over here in this polygon tool I'll make one polygon like that but now it's because we had initially made a triangle, so you'll be seeing a triangle again. But let's just make it into a hexagon like that. A big hexagon. Okay. Select this. Just angle it accordingly. And then just bring it down like that. So like the reason why I've made this hexagon is because this will be acting as a rotation point because I want to rotate this part approximately around this hexagon, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'll select my shape again and come over here to this rotate tool. So you see this light blue icon that comes up, right? So I want to bring that here to the middle of my hexagon. So to do that, I'll be clicking on Alt and just bring this light blue icon up approximately over here and in the angle let's see 50 degrees and if we click on preview yep and you can see it gets rotated like that and we can go ahead and make a copy so now to make multiple copies all we have to do is just click is just click on control plus D like that okay so now we can just go ahead and also delete this hexagon right here. I'll zoom out a little. The shapes we've just made is a little too big and it doesn't really fit inside a document. Uh, like that. Okay. So now it's starting to look look more composed and it looks very similar to what we had just made. Right, so if you want, you can let it be the way it is or we could just go ahead and add different gradients to each one. So let's do that actually because it's going to look pretty neat. Right, so here let's just make it red and blue. Okay. And this one also, I'll be adding a dark purple color. the fill like that. So there you go. Let's just quickly add different gradients to each one. Hmm. So you can you can fast forward this if you like or just 
see the way it's done but you do get the idea right so like this add set red no wait that does not look good but you do get the idea that how it's supposed to be done and you can go ahead and add different gradients to each one like that and once you've added all the gradients it looks something like this okay so this was the 3d glossy logo and let it be the way it is right now because you do now get the idea how gradients is supposed to be added on each part and you can just go ahead and keep adding it the way you wanted it to be and once that's done we can just go ahead and also save our document in order to do that we'll be going to file and clicking on save as so by default my file name is going to be the same as my document name which was 3d glossy glossy logo i'll just change the name as of now i'll just make it 3d glossy logo 2 and my save as type is going to be adobe illustrator as well i highly recommend that we save our file in this format so that in case if i want to make any further changes i can easily do that by accessing my adobe illustrator file and we click on save and okay and there you go our document has now been successfully been saved as an adobe illustrator file so i hope you found this video to be useful and with a little practice you can do you can add the same effect with different shapes as well and if you want you can just instead of adding a gradient you can also add a solid color on the top as well and just play around and experiment and see how it turns out so thanks for watching and stay tuned for more